How's it going guys? It's Jersey Joe here. Um, I'm new to the YouTube scene, um, but I decided I want to go ahead and kind of give it a go and start making some some short little little videos. Um, so as you guys can tell, I am a West Virginia Mountaineer fan. Um, I graduated my master's there back in 2013, but I've been a fan for, for quite some time. Um, and I decided to do a Where Are They Now video. Um, and I plan on doing a segment and on this and a, and a series. Um, but I kind of started off um, thinking that I would do like a decade back. Like, like, cause that kind of shows you the, the trajectory of where our program is going after 10 years. So I started, I decided to start with the quarterback position. Um, and if you go back a decade, that's the 20, uh, 2008, 2009 team. And the starting quarterback for that team was Jarrett Brown, number 16. Um, he was six foot three, two 224 pounds. He ran a 4.5440. He hailed from West Palm Beach, Florida. And he was a three-star recruit based off Rivals.com. Um, he was ranked the 12th overall dual threat quarterback that year. Um, coming into his freshman year, he, went, he was also recruited and, and offered scholarships by Central Florida, Iowa, Minnesota, and NC State. Um, his senior year, um, when he was uh, becoming an NFL hopeful um, during the uh, combine, he scored a 15 on his Wonderlic test. A 15. Um, the average score for that, like from anyone taking it, is a 20. The average score for an NFL quarterback taking that is a 24. All right, just for comparison reasons, and I'm not trying to throw, throw shade, for comparison reasons, Tavon Austin scored a 7. And Ryan Fitzpatrick from Harvard, the quarterback currently for the... He's not currently, he's going back and forth. The Buccaneers, Ryan Fitzpatrick, Ryan Fitzmagic. Um, Fitzmagic scored a 48 on the test, and he took it in a record 9 minutes. He scored a 48. Jarrett Brown scored a 15. So, 2009, the season when Jarrett Brown was the starting quarterback for the West Virginia Mountaineers. Um, he ended up getting a concussion versus Marshall and had to miss the rest of that game. And um, true freshman Geno Smith came in to finish out that game. Um, the knock on Jarrett during his time with the Mountaineers is that he was very injury prone. Um, lots of little dingers, lots of little, very, always dinged up, multiple injuries. Um, and he was actually ended up his final game of his, of his college career, the 2010 Gator Bowl versus Florida State. He was replaced by Geno Smith. We ended up losing that game to Florida State, 33-21. And we were actually up in that game at one point, which is pretty familiar to, I don't know, maybe today's game versus... Uh, Versus Syracuse. Gotta love it. Um, so, his senior season, he had a 130.2 quarterback rating. He had 187 completions on 296 attempts for 2,144 yards. That is a 63.2% completion rate, completion percentage. He averaged 7.2 yards per attempt. He threw 11 touchdowns to nine interceptions, which is not that great for a starting quarterback. In the, at the time, it was the Big East, but NCAA starting quarterback, 11 touchdowns, nine interceptions, not that great. Um, he also, since he was a dual threat on the ground, he added 117 attempts for 466 yards, which was four yards per attempt, and six rushing touchdowns. Um, he almost had half of his rushing touchdowns compared to the 11 um, throwing, which gives you 17 combined touchdowns. Still not that awesome uh, for a starting quarterback in the NCAA. Um, he went undrafted in the 2010 NFL draft. He signed a free agent contract with the San Francisco 49ers, got put on their practice squad, and subsequently released. Um, in 2011, he was signed to the Cleveland Browns um, practice 
squad. No, no, he was signed in the preseason. He got released during preseason final cuts, so he did not make the final. What was it 53, 55 man roster for the NFL? Um, um, and then after, shortly thereafter, I think in November, he got signed by the Indianapolis Colts to their practice squad and was also cut from the Colts. In 2012, he resurfaced in Canada, playing in the CFL for the BC Lions. Only lasted one season there, was a back, mostly used as a backup quarterback. Um, after BC Lions, he went to, he resurfaced for the 2014 season um, with the Spokane Shock of the AFL. Um, was there for the half of the 2014 season, all the 2015 season. 2015, he ended up on injured reserve. Um, and ended up getting benched for a quarterback from none other than Georgetown University, the Hoyas. Yeah, when I think big time college football, I think of the Georgetown Hoyas. That's embarrassing, getting benched for a guy from Georgetown. You played at West Virginia in the Big East. Come on. Um, and then after that, after 2015 with the Spokane Shock, he kind of went off the radar. I couldn't really find any information on where he played or if he was playing at all or if he was coaching or what he was doing. Um, and then all of a sudden, like probably a month ago, 2018, um, he was announced as one of the signings for the West Virginia Rough Riders with, uh, with fellow Mountaineer no Noel Devine, no, um, Mountaineer legend Noel Devine. Um, I'm not. Sh I guess I didn't do enough information, enough enough research. Um, I don't know if West Virginia Rough Riders aren't up there in indoor league or an outdoor league. Um, but I do know that that that, that I've been looking at who they've been signing. They've, they've been signing like a lot of West Virginia alums, um, such as I think Ellis Lancaster just signed with them. Uh, some other guys, some older guys mostly. Um, uh, the safety, um, Robert Sands, just signed with them. Um, so they have, they have a decent amount of guys. Um, oh, uh, Rob, Robert Meacham, the an ex NFL receiver for the Saints and from Tennessee, he just signed with them as well. Um, but I don't know if they play if they're an indoor team or if they play, um, like in the, in the uh, whatever league, um, the USA has that's outdoors like that semi-professional football league in the United States. I don't know what, what league they play in. But, um, but yeah, so this is my first video on YouTube. Um, I'm trying to do a where are they now for, like, West Virginia initially. Um, it's going to go by, by position. So maybe I, I think I put the, put together a list of, of quarterbacks from 2008 till now, including, like, backups and stuff. So some of the videos might be clustered together with guys who kind of never even started for the Mountaineers and end up transferring out. And then we'll talk about like where, like what happened to them when they transferred out. If they kind of fizzled out of football, or if they went on went on and had decent careers after they left West Virginia. Um, then we'll kind of bounce around to positions. We'll probably go offense, defense, offense, defense. Um, I haven't thought that far in advance. And then uh, um, also, um, I'm a I'm a New York Giants fan. I grew up in Jersey, um, so I'm probably gonna t um, parlay this into a um, a New York Giants. Where are they now as well? Um, and then also I, I dabble in MLS soccer, so I might, I might kind of get into that as well. I mean, I'm just seeing where this goes. I mean, I, I've been watching a lot of videos lately, and it looks like something fun to talk about. Comment down below, like, what you guys would like to see. Comment down below about what you thought of Jared Brown when he was here with the Mountaineers. Um, and also, I feel bad um, if anybody's watching this and he played for one of your teams, like the Browns or the Colts or the Niners or the BC Lions or the Spokane Shock. Any of those people, if you feel like, comment below about, how you what you th thought of him when he was when he was with your team? Um, go ahead. Um, this is going to be a. Um, I, I, I'm. I'm trying to watch the the language in the, in this in this channel because I want the younger generations to kind of know what where we came from and, and what we had to deal with. Um, I know that some of these younger guys are a little bit a little bit ruined because they, they I mean for the past two years they have to watch Will Greer. Prior to that, um, they were watching. Uh, who the hell was the quarterback before Greer? Um, Skylar Howard, Clint Trickett, uh, Geno Smith, 
those guys. And then obviously the old timers you guys have like Major Harris and and those guys like that. But um but yeah, so drop a like, subscribe. I'm gonna try to pump out a video like maybe every week. Um just do a little more research and kinda of memorize the the facts a little bit more before I start spewing them out. And then also as it gets like also I'm gonna start putting in my opinion, like for example with Jarrett Brown. Um he was like in my mind he was like since he was a dual threat quarterback, I was kind of thinking like, oh, maybe, maybe he might be the next Pat White, um, but that just that, that never happened. Um, and it's very it's very hard to be the next Pat White. Pat White was a Mountaineer legend who will live on forever and one of the best players to ever don the uniform. But uh, yeah, he just didn't. Like, he, uh, Jared Brown didn't didn't live up to to expectations. Um, being a, I mean, being a three star recruit, uh, we usually I mean three star recruits are it's they're hit or miss. Um, he had a decent 44, probably 40. That's pretty quick for a quarterback, but just couldn't couldn't do it. And like Mountaineer fans were very passionate, um, but we don't have a lot of patience. Um, so if you're not producing, then we turn on you pretty quickly and ask, can you get benched and can we get somebody else in there? But yeah, so just yeah, once again, subscribe, like, leave some comments, and uh, hopefully uh, next week I'll be coming up the the video of the the air whoever whoever moved came up came to us starting quarterback for the 2009-2010 season after Jared Brown graduated. All right? Have a good one.